Top 10 Manhua or Manhua, where the overpowered MC must be human from the start. Hey there, manga lovers! Today, we are diving into the world of Manhua or Manhua to bring you the top 10 series where the overpowered main character must be human from the start. We all love a good superhero story, but sometimes it's refreshing to see a protagonist who is just like us, a regular human being. And in these Manhuas and Manhuas, our heroes may not have special powers or abilities, but they still manage to kick butt and take names. So grab your popcorn and get ready to be blown away by the top 10 Manhua and Manhua where the overpowered MC must be human from the start. Starting off with our number 10, Han Dai Sung Return from the Hell. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on your hats because we are about to take a ride to the underworld. Today, we are talking about the manhwa that will knock your socks off. Han Dai Sung Return from the Hell. Picture this, our hero Han Dai Sung gets sent straight to hell for a whooping 80 years. But instead of wallowing in self-pity, he rolls up his sleeves and gets to work. With some serious fight training and a hefty dose of determination, Han Dai Sung becomes OP and defeats all the demons in hell. Impressive, right? But it doesn't end there. But when he returns to the earth, things have gone from bad to worse. There are monsters everywhere and dungeons galore. Han Dai Sung is not your average joy. Even though he lost all his powers, the system pops up and gives him a quest to complete so he can regain his OP status. It's not the fastest moving story out there, but it's definitely worth the read if you are into this kind of thing. So, what are you waiting for? Grab a cup of coffee and settle in for a wild ride with Han Dai Sung. Number 9. My Little Brother is the Academy Shot In a battle against the King of Dragon Race, Rude Denatos loses all his comrades and his biological brother, Asir Denatos. But when he slays an unidentified dragon, he suddenly finds himself transported back to his academy cadet days. Now, Rudy is on a mission to kill all dragons to prevent a repeat of the past. But there is a catch. In this alternate reality, his brother Aesir, a genius warrior, never existed. So, Rude takes it upon himself to fill the void left by his brother and prepares to face the strongest dragon king of them all, the seventh dragon. Will Root be able to avenge his parents and find his missing brother? Or will he fall short in his quest for vengeance? Filled with action, suspense, and heart-wrenching drama, My Little Brother is the Academy Shot is a must-read for any Manwa fan. Number 8. The Dark Mage's Return to Enlistment Meet Min Jun Kim, an ordinary high school senior in Korea who suddenly finds himself summoned to another world, where he becomes a dark mage. After overcoming all sorts of hardships, Min Jun saves the world with his black magic and returns to the earth, leaving all his wealth and glory as a hero behind. But before he can settle back into his comfortable life, a dungeon break occurs and monsters start pouring out, threatening his peaceful days. And so, Min Jun has no choice but to enlist in the army the very next day. Join Min Jun on his journey as he fights to protect his world from the monsters that threaten it. Filled with action, adventure, and a touch of humor, The Dark Mage's Return to Enlistment is a must read for any Manwa fan. Number 7. I Regress to My Ruined Family Get ready to travel back in time with I Regress to My Ruined Family, a medieval fantasy manhwa with a vengeance twist. The main character, a swordsman born with a special talent, dies while protecting humanity from the dragon army invasion. But that's not the end of the story, as he finds himself reborn into the same family, but in a different timeline where the dragons and humans have signed a non-aggression pact. This manhwa is not a typical revenge story, as the main character rarely kills anyone but still manages to deliver an exciting and visually stunning medieval fantasy experience. The world building is extensive, with multiple kingdoms and nobles occupying different lands and the looming threat of another dragon invasion. The side characters are also written well, with some having more likable personalities than the main character. If you are a fan of fantasy, medieval setting, and a good revenge plot, then I Regress to My Ruined Family is a must read. Number 6. 10,000 Layers of Q Refining 10,000 Layers of Q Refining, a manhwa about a young man named Suli, who is the top cultivator in his school but has yet to build his foundation even after reaching the 10,000th layer of Q Refining. 
It's like being the best basketball player in the world but not knowing how to dribble. And if that wasn't bad enough, Suli keeps running into killers sent by an evil organization. Talk about a rough time. But don't worry, Suli isn't going to let a little thing like being the laughing stock of his school or being hunted down by killers to stop him. No sir, he is going to defy the odds and show everyone what he's made of. Will he be able to overcome the odds and become the strongest cultivator of them all? You'll have to read 10,000 layers of cure refining to find out. Moving on to our number 5, Corpse Knight Gunther. Humans have lost the war against vampires and the fate of mankind is in the hands of a reanimated corpse. Gunther, a former gladiator, is brought back to life as a powerful corpse knight to protect humanity from being wiped out by the vampire hordes. But being undead comes with its own set of limitations. Gunther needs a power source to keep moving, which makes for an interesting twist in the story. This manhwa is a top-tier unique fantasy story with engaging characters and art that's out of this world. The main character is not a typical hero but rather a reanimated corpse who is overpowered but needs to charge his batteries to keep fighting. The world building is well connected and the diverse personalities of the characters make this story more exciting. Although there are some translation errors here and there, the overall storytelling is still understandable. This is a must read for any fan of the medieval fantasy genre. Number 4. Seoul Station's Necromancer this story follows Kan Wu Jin, a powerful necromancer who spent years surviving on planet Alphan, only to return to Earth and find himself a low-level dungeon crawler. But with his incredible skills, major kills are vying for his attention. And with his old enemy threatening invasion, his powers might be the only thing standing between humanity and destruction. The story is a decent necromancy-based manhwa with an OPMC. It's an interesting twist on a typical fantasy story with a character who has already established themselves as the powerful ruler before returning to their home planet. The art and characters are well done, making for an enjoyable read. So far, I have read 79 chapters and I am excited to see where the story goes from here. If you are a fan of fantasy or necromancy, this manhwa is definitely worth checking out. Number 3. I have to be a monster. Our protagonist is Xiao Qiu, also known as Musk, a special hunter who has been guarding humanity against evil monsters for years. Unfortunately, he is farmed by the government and his life takes a depressing turn. But things take a turn for the better when he is reborn and embarks on a journey to become a bloodless and tearless monster that silently protects humanity. Xiao Qiu is a really likable character who is easygoing and can transform into a monster. And who doesn't love a cool monster, right? The art is also top-notch, especially during fighting scenes and there are some really unique monster designs to boot. The only downside is the translation, but fear not, it is still readable. So if you want a dungeon type manual with a well polished plot and awesome character design, give I have to be a monster a try. Number 2. The more I kill, the stronger I get. Welcome to the future world where alien beasts have invaded and humanity is on the brink of extinction. In this world, martial arts has risen to fight against the alien beast and a large number of martial arts powerhouses have emerged to protect humanity. Among them is Xiao Ming who was betrayed during a mission to eliminate the alien beasts. After his soul is reborn 300 years later, Xiao Ming is back on the path of martial arts cultivation to seek revenge. The story is filled with action and adventure as Xiao Ming becomes stronger with every kill. The art style is impressive and helps to showcase the intensity of the fighting scenes. The characters are well developed and you will find yourself rooting for them as they fight for humanity's survival. Overall, the more I kill, the stronger or I get is a great manual for anyone who loves martial arts and science fiction. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this thrilling ride. And finally, number one, who killed the Murim Lord? Are you a fan of action-packed manuals? Then you might want to check out who killed the Murim Lord. In this story, Hyo Shin Wu is the grandson of the leader of the Murim Alliance, but he has been living as a martial arts expert since he was just 11 years old. One day, he is attacked by an unknown martial artist and framed for his grandfather's murderer. Now, he is on the run for the entire Murim world and seeking revenge against his grandfather's killer while clearing his name. Although the beginning of the manhwa is a bit messy, the plot picks up the pace later on. 
The story takes place in a modern-day Miriam world, which is a refreshing change from the traditional medieval setting. While the art in the first few chapters can be inconsistent, it becomes much better as the story progresses. There are also plenty of exciting fighting scenes, and the main character is ruthless and overpowered. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to our channel for more manhwa and webtoon content. Thanks again for tuning in and happy reading!